DJ Papa G, uh, DJ Stroke Producer. Um, you can catch me on DJ Papa G, you know, sorry, Papa G UK uh, on all my Instagrams, on Instagram and uh, Facebook. Yeah. My name's Daps, and I am a uh, mastering engineer at Compound Audio. Uh, if you go to the website, www.compoundaudio.net, you can find me at all my socials by looking on the site. Perfect. Right, guys. There's nothing more you could go do. <laughs> yeah, no, no. <laughs> it's, it's all right. That's all right. I just want to say that I'm proper excited to chat with you guys. Okay. Okay. No, seriously. I know you're like, okay, why? Why is she excited? Why is she excited? I'm intrigued. Excited. I'm intrigued. Yes. Intrigued. Because you did a remix for our single, for mm. Urban Spirit single, The Only One. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And I Googled you guys. <laughs> I stalked you on the gram. <laughs> I'm like, yo, these guys are big in the game. Yeah. And you did this for us. So I'm like, yeah. Thank oh, you. Thank it was you. a pleasure. It was an absolute pleasure. Because I literally, it, it was just, um, I got asked to do the, the remix. Yeah. And I thought, at the time, I was like super busy with my with my work and stuff like that. And I thought, you know what? I want to take part in it because whenever I get given an opportunity to do something, I don't want to let people down. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, and also, I thought, right, I'll speak to Papa G because we've we've bounced off each other for years, making collabs, music, you know, yeah. just mates. You know what I mean? We're good mates. So I said to him, like, perhaps we've got this opportunity to do a, a remix. Are you up for it? And he's just like, yeah, yeah, yeah of course. <laughs> no, John, I'm sorry, but I have, I have plenty of time, so of course. So come on, <laughs> you know. Let's so do this. I sent you the parts, and then um, I think I went away, didn't I? Yeah, you I went away for that I was, week. I, yeah, I was away for that week, uh, and when I came back, perhaps just blessed me with this <laughs> idea, <laughs> and I was like, nice. So the, the the track kind of wrote itself, really, because you know I I, I understood the concept of where they mm. were going, yeah. so. I've got to send it out to the original producer yeah. and the, you know, the vocalist on the track. You know, I got it. I got the concept. I got the, you know, the rift, where it came from. And that's the thing for me when reconstructing somebody else's music, um, you know, I like to, you know. Find the feet of, of where, where, where they were going. Where in. they're going yeah. originally. Mm -hmm. And then hopefully take it on the next journey like a next story, especially within, mm. our, within our genre. I could have easily, you know, come with like, you know, a, a sound that may not have complemented yeah. what they were talking about. And personally, it was, the, it was um, what's the guy's name? The deal, the, the sample. Oh, Polish. Polish, yeah. yeah. There, was a, there was a part, that, literally, there was a section in that record, and I thought... Mentions got, Marvin Gaye, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I went, I've got to, I've got to put Marvin because, <laughs> but yeah, because you know, that I I can relate to that record from you know, a young boy listening to that song, that song, parents playing it, and yeah, I thought, yeah, I need this song <laughs> from because you said to me, didn't you like, should we put that in the tune? I was like, stand it, <laughs> chuck it in there because <laughs> yeah, it was needed, it was needed, and, and like I said, I understood, you know, all the comp, you know, the content in the record, mm. and yeah, that's one of my, I love remixing. You know, yeah. As a, you know. Well, that's the one thing that I found someone similar to myself with. Whenever I've remixed an old tune, like a classic, if someone said to me, like, oh, do you want to remix, you know, whatever tune, I would rather rebuild the old tune mm -hmm. out of the samples and then put a twist on it. And I found yeah. that that's what Papa G did as well. Like, we were like, no way. Yeah. I just find that once you've rebuilt the tune to a degree, you can twist it so, and, and not, you know, go too far away from it because, I mean, I've done remixes back in the day where it is completely different. Yeah. And it didn't go down too well. People are like, oh, but the original is still the best, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and it's like, oh, but I'm trying to do something different. So I've just found that twisting the original seems to work, yeah. doesn't it? It's, yeah. it's a, getting it, a bit more getting it to how the original is mm. and then add and that extra little stamp but of yeah. yourself is your character because mm. whenever you're producing you've got to stamp you yeah so you're just like building upon what's already, already there without there. tearing it apart yeah. Got a thing. yeah very much but in this case we had to flip it yeah because we, of different music right? yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it was it was different mm. <laughs> but I, had, I spoke to polish though on instagram yeah like, he hit me up and i spoke to him and you know he was he was a nice lad you know what i mean so i said to him keep me posted if you want anything or anything you know tune wise features yeah. or anything like that you know so because you cool. get a lot because you do your the mastering, your mastering and the feedback yeah you know, on twitch mm. it's a good because you, you know you don't 
tend to get a master or anyone out there to, that gives you like that truth about your, yeah. your music and where he does that. So to have him, you've got artists that makes drill, mm. other music that, you know, other uh, the people that we've just worked with, yourselves we've worked with, we could, you know, link another producer yeah. to you. Yeah, okay. You know, because at the end of the day, there could, there could be a producer who's got an instrumental that could fit a song that you guys have written. Mm. Or, yeah. You know, and get some... You get that perfect get map. On it. Mm. Well, like, for example, um, there was a guy, um, I'm not too sure, I think he's from down London somewhere, and he makes grime. And his, his stuff is amazing. But because he's not got a name, he's not really getting heard of. And he's DJing and he's trying and he's trying and, he's, and he sends me like a bag of tunes every so often. And there was one particular tune and I just said, let me send that to Devil Man. And he mm -hmm. heard it and he was like, mate, I'm all over this. So he wow. was like, what? Devil Man? Like to him, he's like a yeah, god. Yeah, do you know yeah. what I mean? See, you know, I was saying to Papa G, like some of the people that I work with, I just see them as like me and you, mm. you know, just people, normal. Normal people. Mm. whereas you know, to others, they're like, oh, my God, you know, we're not worthy. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I know what you mean. Because I, I have, like, met certain celebrities, and and it is, I, I guess, not anti-climax, but I just look at people as if, you know, they are regular people, aren't they, at the end yeah, of the day? Yeah, They've, yeah, yeah. They do a job, and it's just that their job's a bit more high-profile than ours. But it's like respect given where respect is due, yeah, you know what I mean? And course, when I find the stuff that you guys have done... Mm. <laughs> yeah, top yeah, yeah. Well, thank you. <laughs> I think it's absolutely brilliant the things that you've done. I mean, do you want to do some name drops for us? Let people know who it is that you well, work with. Perhaps <laughs> you on the record label, yeah. Because you have a history of what where you were cutting your teeth back in the day. Yeah. Well, I mean, the people used to mingle with and well, my production, uh, you know, DJ Wise first would have started out in a place called Roller Express in in. Um, in London, North London. Um, my career kind of started from there, working in a normal roller roller skating night. Yeah. Then got moved on to doing, you know, um, second arenas and so on at these raves. <clears throat> with that, by with that, um, my brother, Junglis, MC Junglis, we were doing stuff together. His friend was best friend with the owner of Weekend Rush, and he says he could get us on this particular pirate radio station at the time which was quite you know before call was the top right yeah. calls the top yeah. station now yeah but before call it was weekend rush right and you know that was the station that we all said yeah we want to be on because you had djs such as red ant um uh remark um russia and fox with mc shabba and mc fearless that was on there with the brain killers so, yeah, that was the station for me that I wanted to get on. Um, and I was taking it way back. Yeah, yeah. This is, this is <laughs> 93. So, yeah, but from 93 to 95, I got to a position where I wanted to produce my own music. You know, from the time you're on a radio station with people like Remark, Mr. R.I.P. Don, you know. Um, from suburban base. From suburban yeah. base and that. So, yeah, I wanted to learn how to legend, write maybe. music. Yeah, definitely. I wanted to learn how to, um, you know, learn how to produce this music. Yeah. You know? And I think my first studio I ever used was at the back of Roller Express um, with a producer called Highlander. Um, we did, I did a rendition of the record called Pirates by uh, Shabba, Shabba Ranks, Cocker T, Home T. Yeah. Of of, of uh, Green Sleeve Records. Um, nothing happened to that. And then <laughs> I gave up my job. <laughs> I, did, I did madness. To pursue your music. Yeah, literally. Wow. Literally, because I wanted to learn it. I, yeah, I yeah. gave up my job because at that time I was a sales assistant at a furniture store. Gave that up. And literally just put all, you know, the money that I was having into hiring at studios. And then from 96, 97, I was introduced to um, a producer called Lynx, um, who is known as Different Levels. He works, he worked on Stevie Ipadee's album. So me, and I got introduced by him through uh, an MC that was, you know, MCing for me on Weekend Rush at the time. And then 
yeah, started working with Lynx. Then I got an opportunity to do two tracks on the first album. And this was, you know, before Stevie passed away in 97. And then 90. <laughs> oh, this is great. You see the break, you see the cogs turning. <laughs> but, um, You're writing your memoirs right now. Yeah, now. <laughs> very much. Here we go. And then from, from then, I left Week and Rush, started doing Pirate Station in Essex called Syndicate. Um, is that like Syndicate FM? Yeah, Syndicate yeah. FM. Daz. <laughs> Daz, yeah. Yeah. I worked for them and then went away 96, end of 96 to Jamaica and knowing that I had sent a demo tape for the open forum, but I wasn't in, in the country to hear it, come back and there was some, like, you know, 20, call, 20 missed calls from the, from Smurf telling me to contact him. Um, you know, they would like to meet me and that's when I got on Call FM. And from Cool, I then started to work with a producer called DJ Magic, who was part of Prisoners Technology. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So There's a big tune, like, yeah. Tricks of Technology. Tricks, tricks, tricks of Technology. Tick, tick, tick. Or, or was it uh, de Delicate? Delicate Beats. beats. <laughs> yeah. The Snoop Dogg sound, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> For me, it was the sample out uh, of... Um, there's a sample in it from... Uh, the film of uh, there is a there is a well known sample in in the middle breakdown of the tune. For, is it, uh, Kanye Reeves. It's yeah. from one of his films. It's a technical. Te yeah, that, yeah, that's me. We're we surrounded by point. Yeah. <laughs> Are these all like jungle and drum and bass? Yeah, jungle, yeah. drum and bass. This, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can look these all up on Fresh Cuts Fresh Cuts Records. Yeah, which one it was? But number one was the yellow. Yeah, that was Yellow Center. That, yeah. that was technology, Chicka Te technology, Te wasn't technology, it? Technology, yeah. that's that one. So, yeah, works with Magic um, alongside another producer called Rampa. Uh, he, he was like, he won an Asian kind of competition, mm -hmm. Asian jungle DJ competition back in the mid 90s. End up working with him, me, Magic, and him, done a label together called Detox. From Detox, I then end up working with my friend's record label called Tear Mat which was interlinked with Juice Recordings of Splash. Um, That's another thing was, from Daz, wasn't it? From Daz, and I was yeah. doing everything. At these times, I was using Daz's, stu I was using Daz's studio, yeah. but at the same time, I was trying to get music on his label, mm. but obviously my skill sets wasn't at that. Yeah, and uh, this was in London? This was all back in like, London strokes Essex. Yeah. You know, like, the label's based in Essex, but I was living in London. Um, and then, yeah. Mate, I didn't even know that, you know, back then, I didn't know that Juice and Splash was all the same, the same, yeah, the same yeah. thing. Yeah. Although, like, the artwork is very similar to, the similar Sim in, yeah. in ways, in yeah, it, yeah, do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. But I never knew that. Yeah, Splash, Splash was more hard. Baz, yeah. And then Juice. No, Juice was the hardest of yeah, no, yeah. yeah, Juice was, you know, Darren, Jeff, and Daz. Mm. From, from, you know, from my knowledge, I can remember. But yeah, I'm. I just. I'm, I was. A, I'm a person that I. You know, I needed to learn my craft. Yeah. I had to learn the craft. I've sacrificed my yeah. life to learn my craft. Mm. I have. You know, family. You know, relationships, and so on. And you know. Uh, yeah, I, I couldn't change anything because otherwise I can't see myself doing anything else other than what I'm doing already. Mm. So. You know, from all those periods, and this is this is not even before. I've not even met. I call him Miyagi. I call him Dex Miyagi. And he's Daniel son. Yeah, Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> the real name is Daniel son. He's Miyagi. Yeah, but so, the master. Yeah, he's the master. You know. Yeah, but he's taught me well. Yeah. But throughout that whole period of the mid nineties, was literally learning the craft of how to produce and what works with what. You mm. know, they're like queuing to cut records and cut, you know cutting dub plates in it cutting, cutting dub plates, plates at the time to play out yeah. so dub but plate. you're saying like with doing the music that was a big sacrifice when it came to family and relationships yeah yeah why, why, why would you say that is it because you had to like travel a lot no or it's just it's, 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 it's part two <laughs> come back for part two everyone tune in next week yeah, <laughs> part two yeah, yeah. 